We're at day two of DevOps UK and I'm here with Laurent who gave a really cool keynote about video games but specifically how do you design a video game where it's not too smart that you don't enjoy yourself? There are a lot of different techniques to do that. Um, usually when you try to develop a competitive game like a racing game or or a sport game, uh, you we try to uh, develop a very smart uh, artificial intelligence to compete against the players. And once we get something that is not beatable 99% uh, of the time, uh, we usually try to make it just dumb enough to be beatable by the 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 most uh, the majority of of players. So how do you find that threshold? Because the only kind of um, thing I've done to do with that is reinforcement learning, mm -hmm. which is one of it, it's a type of machine learning that looks at, at kind of is used in game playing. Mm -hmm. And I've got as far as finding out how to program something really simple to find the optimal path. How do you cut it off? In and fact, how do you choose that cutoff point? With a lot of playtest, you you have to to test your game and to let players test your game. But it's in a way it's easy to to build a smart artificial intelligence using machine learning to to find the the best path possible or, or things like that. But it's very complicated to to make it beatable. So you have to playtest and playtest again, record playtest, and 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 just change uh, little sliders to make it miss some some turns or or, or some um, or to to lose some velocity during the the, the, the race, and. Yeah, you have to spend hours playtesting your game. So I suppose that's that's interesting because what you're saying then is that after you've spent a lot of time coding this, there's a huge element of psychology. Yeah, yeah, because every every game is made to be finished. Even very complicated or hard games are made to be finished to empower the the, the players and to make them feel that they are better than the machine. So yes, the the, the 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 time we spend the most is in making the game easier for players. And it explains why a lot of games today are very, very easy mm -hmm. uh, compared to games we had 20 years ago. Because players now want to to be to feel good and to feel great and 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 so we deliver games that are usually easier easier to beat than the games we did before and it makes me sad because uh, yeah i like being i like feeling like i'm i'm very good at a game and most of all i i i i like feeling that the game is not cheating or, or trying to make me believe that I'm stronger than actually. Do you think part of that is that the market for in the gaming industry market has expanded to include more people? Yeah. So it used to be a very niche group of people. Um, although I always find a few people at a conference who've also heard of Commander Keen from mm. my childhood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I wouldn't find them on the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's complicated. But but of course, uh, the the market is very open today. Everybody plays. I, I think even gr grandmas and grandpas yeah. are playing thanks to uh, to some games or, g or gaming company. And you can play on Facebook. You can play on your smartphone. You can play everywhere. So the market is very open, and you have a lot of different um, gamer uh, psychology or needs. Uh, that you can fulfill using different type types of game, and you have some game companies uh, specialized in in very difficult games. Yeah. Uh, and the niche of uh, players who enjoy these type of games is relatively small, but it's a great opportunity for game developers to to try to make a very hard game because some players want to play that. Mm. And not only, you know, play tennis on the Wii with your grandma or something more um, easy to do or easy to play. Do you find that more interesting to develop as well, the more difficult games? 
Yes, probably. Because as a player, I, I want to feel that I'm very good at what I do. And again, not because, not only because the, the, the machine tries to, to, to make me believe that I'm better than I am actually. So how do you find, so you, you've got the psych, your, your psychologic, psychological metric mm -hmm. for finding what is easy and medium and, and difficult in terms of that. But when you're actually training the algorithms that, that form the basis of the computer playing the game, mm -hmm. how do you actually cut it off? Is it that you don't train it as much? We, from my experience, I, I always train it, train it um, the 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 more I can uh, to make it real, really strong. And just the the settings are are changed to make it easier to beat and to make the difficulty levels. So you keep your very strong artificial intelligence, mm. and you apply different settings. Um, the example with the, the racing game is that you will have a very strong artificial intelligence, but it will play using a different setting, um, a different car setting. So the, the car won't go as fast uh, as yours, or it won't turn as easily as yours. And I understand. So um, rather than, because I've been thinking of it wrongly, I've been thinking of it is that you don't train it as much, so you don't give the AI the, the, the same, ability. Yeah. But you're saying that actually you. You you basically kind of cheat because you yeah. you know like you, when you start a race in different positions, the when, fast people start at the back. You're <laughs> when you do when you work on a game, you are always cheating, <laughs> always on at any level you are cheating, and players are not supposed to do to to know that. <laughs> oh, okay, well we'll finish the interview there before we give away to <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Work it, make it, do it, makes us.